Shalom friends, this is Maim, and we are going to be learning Biblical Hebrew from the Torah portion, Metzora, in this lesson. And we're also going to talk about how Rabbi Nachman um, and the Midrash Rabbah connects uh, the first few verses of this Torah portion with the power of music. Okay, so this is a picture of two, two turtle doves, okay. So here we have a, a vav, and this is from Leviticus 14.1, okay? We have a vav and a patach and the yud together that makes one syllable that says vai, okay, vai. And then we have a dalit of the patach says da, and then the bet with its set in, the resh together says be, vai da ber. And the, the, the vav means and, and yedaber is he, he will speak. Actually, he will speak, but with the vav, it reverses the tense, and it makes it, he, and he spoke. And this is Hashem yod he vav he, the sacred name. So Hashem spoke. Hashem means the name. Again, okay, it's referring to yod he vav he. And then this is um, uh, an aleph with, its, with a segol, and a lamed. This is el, and el means two. And this is a mem with a cholam, which says mo. And then a shin with a segol, with the he, it says she, moshe. This is Moses. And then, uh, then we have a lamed with a zera, which says le, and the aleph is part of that syllable, le. And then we have a mem with a, with a cholem and the resh together it says mor, le mor, which is translated as saying. So Hashem spoke to Moses saying. And then, then we have a, a zain with a cholem and when, um, with the aleph, which, and then the tav, this says zot, zot, which means this. And then we have the tav with the chiri. So this is t with the he, and the shiva is silent. This is t, and this yud, and the segel, and the he together is ye. So t, ye, t, ye. And this means um, shall be. Okay, and it's actually feminine. So she shall be. And it's talking about this. So we have. Uh, tav with a cholem vav, this is to, and this is a resh with a patak in a tav, so rat, torat. This is from the word Torah. Torah is feminine, it's talking about the teachings from the first five books of Moses. And then torat, it means the Torah of, okay, the teachings of. So this shall be the teaching of or the law of. And then we have a, ha, a he with a patak, which says ha. And this is the, ha means the, and then mem with a shiva, it says meh, and then we have a tsari with a cholam which says so, and a resh with a kamatz, and the ayin says ra. Ha metzora, and metzora is, um, it's it's translated as, often translated as <laughs> the leper, but here it's just, um, the per, it's, leper's not a good translation, it's the person afflicted with sara'at, that is the biblical name. Um, and you can hear the, the similarity, metzora, tsara'at, right? You can hear tsari in the ration, both of those words. Metzora refers to the the person that has tsara'at. Tsara'at is the name of the disease. And of course, um, you know, the sages say that it's talking about um, a, a spiritual disease that's no longer, that we no longer have today, okay? And um, various uh, Jewish sources list different different various sins that can cause sara'at. And then we have bet, so this is be, and then we have a yud, and then, the, and then we have a whole and bab, this is yo, and then the mem, mem pits, this is yom, be yom, which means in in the day, or on the day, okay, be yom, and this is a, um, a tet with a kamatz, which says ta, and then a he with the kamatz, a tef kamatz, which is ha, and then a resh with the kamatz, which is ra, and then a tav with the cholam vav, which says to, tahara to. And this is um, his cleansing. So um, tahor is uh, clean, taharat is uh, cleansing of, and then the vav means his, okay, tahara to, his cleansing. And then we have a vav with a shev, which says ve, and a he with a, um, a vav with a, um, the dot in between, so this says hu, and then a vet with the kamatz, and the aleph says va, vehu va. And this, the vav means and, 
and then the puto part is um like he who va is like he shall be made to come because this this part here va is 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 come but in this form it's he shall be made to come or um in english it's more common to say brought okay he shall be brought and then we have the l again which means two and then we have the ha again which means the and then we have a a, a, a kaf with a cholam which says ko and then a he with it with a tzere, which says he and then nun safit so says hen a kohen and has the kohen is priest okay so to the priest um let me trope this really quick if you were um troping it from the torah it sounds something like this oops Let's do that again. Vaida better than I am, or shale more. Zot tietora tametsora beom tarado vehuva el hakohen. That's enough for the Hebrew lesson, but I want to read up to verse four and um, just give a little commentary on it um, based on Rabbi Nachman. And Le Leviticus chapter 14, starting with the first verse, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the person afflicted with Sara'at. On the day of his cleansing, he shall be brought to the Kohen. The Kohen shall go outside the camp, and the Kohen shall look, and behold, the lesion of Sara'at has healed in the afflicted person. Um, then the Kohen shall order, and the person to be cleansed shall take two live clean birds, a cedar stick, a strip of crimson wool, and hyssop. Okay, and now um, let me read you something about that. Um, from and this is from uh, the 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 Midrash Rabbah by Rabbah. It says, "Why must a leper bring two birds as a sacrifice? Leprosy mm -hmm. is a punishment for the one who spoke slander." Oh. Now, of course, remember we translated we that the version the um, version of the Bible that we read it translated as sara'at. Okay, leprosy is not really a very good term for it. It's not exactly leprosy. It's sara'at. So sara'at is a punishment for the one who spoke slander. Our sages teach: let the chattering words come and effect forgiveness for the chattering person. Now, Rabbi Nachman says these two live clean birds are the source for the voice of holiness. Okay, so someone spoke um, something evil. And so the, the birds, um, the two birds, you know, birds, they give beautiful music, right? A beautiful, innocent music. And so Rabbi Nachman says that the birds, the queen birds are the source for the voice of holiness, which corresponds to the cherubs upon the ark in the sanctuary. So two birds, which remind us of the two winged creatures on the ark in the sanctuary. And the ark is a source of prophecy. Thus, the word chazan, this is the person that leads in the prayers, or singer, is related to chazan, which means vision or prophecy. Now, when a person sings for the sake of God, he draws his song from the two live clean birds and from the inspiration of the cherubs, the source of prophecy. And that kind of music can inspire many others to serve God. But when a person is motivated to sing vulgar or profane songs or songs for personal gain, then he draws his music from the birds of impurity. And that kind of music can spiritually damage anyone who hears it. So this is something that, you know, I, I think is really important and that I try to teach to my children. I try to make sure that when they listen to music, they pay attention to what the the songs, um, what the song is saying, what the words are. It's not enough to have a good tune, um, you know, especially if you're going to sing it. And, you know, music is a special kind of communication, but it's some, because it's something that can bypass your, um, your, your, your mental filters that, that determine right from wrong. Because, you know, when someone says something to you, you usually think about and analyze what they say. But when it, when it comes to music, you kind of let that go and you just go along with it. And so subconsciously, subliminally, you know, that can that can have an effect, a negative effect. And I think that's what Rabbi Nachman is talking about here.
is that we have to be careful when it comes to music um, because it can affect us. It's not innocent. Um, and we have to pay attention to the words that we're singing. And also that we should make sure that, you know, the, you know everything that we do, whatever we have, we should do it for, you know, for God's, for God's glory, for the sake of heaven. And this includes the music we listen to and that we sing. So I hope that um, is encouraging and uplifting to you. And it's something that you will think about as you study this week's Torah portion and the, the, the birds or the turtle doves that are mentioned. Shalom. Would you like to become the healer of your home and your community and create a profitable online health coaching business? Are you interested in becoming a health coach, a naturopath, an herbalist, or a nutritionist? Do you need help finding the right program for studying holistic health and healing? Or perhaps you already have certification, but you're still not confident enough in healing people and don't know how to build a business that will empower you to have an impact and allow you to leave your regular day job. Are you ready to get a deep and comprehensive picture of holistic health and healing and learn from top healers in our day so that you can stop being stuck in a job or a career you don't have a passion for? Heal yourself and others without the need for pharmaceutical drugs with harmful side effects, doctors, or even dentists. Become more knowledgeable about holistic health and healing than most medical doctors who have graduated from medical school without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and years of time in expensive medical schools or programs. Build a health coaching business that will allow you to work from home and achieve time, location, and financial freedom. Aruka.com empowers people to become the healers of their home and their community by equipping them with naturopathic herbalism, health coaching, and online business and marketing skills. My name is Maim. I'm 42 years old and a homeschool mom of seven beautiful children. These two in the photo are my October babies. I became a naturopathic herbalist and health coach in order to take charge of my family's health when the modern medical system kept failing us. We were spending thousands of dollars on insurance and other medical expenses, but they did not have any answers for our health problems. Working from home has been such a blessing for us. I used to work at the NASA Ames Research Center as a computer scientist slash engineer, but being able to have an online business has enabled me to surpass my income at NASA and to be there for my family, homeschool them, take care of them, watch them grow up every step of the way for 18 years now. I started Aruka.com in 2009 to help people become healthy and heal themselves. I've coached all sorts of people and eventually even medical doctors and nurses started coming to me repeatedly for help for various health issues for themselves or their loved ones. I help people heal themselves of serious diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and high blood pressure diabetes, as well as other common issues such as hormone imbalances, abnormal bleeding, migraines, eczema, kidney stones, gallstones, cataracts, and even urinary tract infection. Various people began asking me to start teaching what I know about holistic health and healing, including two medical doctors who have become very good friends of mine. When I realized that there was such a demand for the knowledge I have that even medical doctors were telling me to teach, I shifted the focus of Aruka.com, and now we teach people how to become confident healers through our naturopathic herbalist and health coach certification program. We help people become healers of their home and community and create profitable online health coaching businesses. If you're interested in becoming a holistic healer, please visit our website, Aruka.com, A R U. K-A-H dot com. Again, that's A-R-U-K-A-H dot com. Hope to see you there.